nodes or anything that are powered by the motion of the electrons. So the LiPo, for example, is one type of load. We'll talk about others. They can be electric motors, um, dishwashers. Quite often motors are being run. But we'll just use light bulbs for now because they're easy to draw and it's easy to remember what they are. Let's see how loads work. I'll just start off with uh, one light bulb, oh, excuse me, one battery. So here's my battery. And I'll call this loads in series. By that I mean the electrons that leave this cathode, they're going to have to run through both light bulbs to get to the anode. Bummer. So I'm going to use up my energy as I run through here. If I have a 6 volt battery, Then the electrons are rushing through here. They've got to run a gauntlet. They've got to run through this light bulb. They lose energy. They run through this light bulb. They lose energy to get back to here. So I've got a voltage drop across each of these bulbs. Now if I look at the positive and the negative aspects, let's see, I've got my common. Here's my hot red. And I've got 6 volt drop across here. 6 volts, 6 volts, 6 volts, 6 volts. And now I get to the battery. I mean the the bulbs, there's a 6 volt drop across both these bulbs. If they're identical bulbs, then what I'm going to have is a 3 volt drop. I should say it the other way. I'm going to have a 3 volt drop across this bulb and a 3 volt drop across this bulb. So in series, the battery, the loads have to share the drop. If they're identical, then they'll each be equal. They'll both be 3 volts. That's the only type we'll consider so far. So voltage drop of 3 volts, voltage drop of 3 volts, the total is 6 volts. If I had uh, 3 batteries and 3, excuse me, 3 bulbs in series, boom, boom. Incidentally, I draw these, boom, 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 right? What happens if one of my light bulbs goes out and my bulbs are in series? Well, as Einstein once said, you're screwed because now the electrons can't get from the cathode to the anode because the entire circuit's broken down. That's a big hassle. I don't know if you know about Christmas lights, but Christmas lights used to be and sometimes they still are, wired in series. And as the, if the bulbs are wired in series, if one goes out, they all go out because the circuit's broken. Anyway, if this is a, if this is a six volt battery and these are identical bulbs, then I'd have a two volt drop across this bulb. Let's see how bright two volts. 2 volt drop across this bulb, 2 volt drop across this bulb, 2 plus 2 plus 2, that's 6. Now let's look at batteries in parallel. All right, I'm sorry, I keep saying batteries. Let's look at loads in parallel. Loads. Get a load of this. Okay. I'll just use one battery. Now, I'm going to have one path here, and I'm going to have another path. And I'll put that another light bulb on that other path. 
these are two batteries in parallel. Notice now the electrons, as they move through here, they can go one way or the other. They can go this way, or they can go this way. And so, let's look at the drop. If I've got a six volt drop across here, across that battery, if I've got a six volt battery, well, I'm going to have a six volt drop across, across here, across here, across here, boom. I'm going to have a six volt drop across that bulb. But I'm still on the same conducting surface, the same wire as I move across here. I've got a six volt drop across here too. So I've got I got a six volt drop here and a six volt drop here. If I put these two batteries in parallel instead of in series, I'm going to have a bigger voltage drop and the bulbs will be brighter. Now there's a trade-off. Since the electrons split up, I'm only getting half of the electrons through this bulb and half of the electrons through this. So we'll find out later that the current is smaller, but the voltage drop is just the same as well, uh, for both of them. So they share the same voltage drop, and it's the original voltage drop here. So two six volt, so six volt uh, power supply is going to provide six volts in parallel. Here's the other advantage: if this breaks, if this bulb goes out, then flow is going to continue going through this bulb. Isn't that great? I mean, what's going to happen if? Uh, if the lights go out in your house. If you lose one bulb, well, that means the entire house isn't going to go out because your house is wired in parallel. Now I lose one light bulb, and now I can go and turn on other lights so I can find out where I put the rest of the light bulbs. Nice deal. So just to recap, batteries in series, you stack them up, and they add up. If I reverse the polarity, that's a negative, but, but they add up either way. And, uh, and I, can, I can add or subtract voltage depending on how I stack them up. Generally, you add voltage. Now, batteries in parallel, however, you don't get more voltage out of it. You don't get more current. What you do get is you get a more stable current source and perhaps a longer battery life. Loads in series, and we used incandescent lights as loads. Uh, when you have loads in series, the electrons is moving through the path. It's got to go through, say, I've got two battery, two loads in series, two bulbs in series. I got to go through both bulbs with that one electron. And so it splits the voltage difference between them. A six volt battery going through two identical bulbs in series would drop three volts across each bulb. Two bulbs in parallel, however, would have a six volt drop because you still see a potential difference of six volts across each of the bulbs. Uh, the trade-off is that the electron paths split up, so you have less current, but you don't have to worry about that yet. The other, another advantage of batteries in parallel is that if one of the bulbs goes out in series, the whole circuit's dead, but if one bulb goes out in parallel, then the other bulbs will still work.